Hello and welcome to the Studio Mala podcast. Joining me on the podcast today is Cassandra Sarvogel. Hi, thanks for having me. You're very welcome. Now, you work at Mala and recently worked on a Mala Mini called Doubles. Yeah. Which I have to say is absolutely lovely. Thank you so much, really. Thank you. So where did the idea for Doubles come from? Oh, it's actually, yeah, it's a really long story. Um, about two years ago, my friend John and I camped in Amsterdam, I think at Camp Seeberg. And to get there, you have to cross this motorway bridge that's going off across like a really big river. And when you step down from that motorway bridge, um, you see this huge metal vert ramp right beside the river, right underneath the motorway. And it's completely, gr- you know, covered in graffiti. It's really, really cool. So at that time, I took some photographs on my film camera, had a great trip, you know, blah, blah, blah. You know, fast forward a year later, I had just graduated and I was thinking of ways to kind of expand my portfolio. And I kind of had the idea to illustrate a piece based on some of my old like film photography. And I found, you know, a particular photograph of that bridge. And I thought, oh, this will be great for, you know, backgrounds work. I painted it and then it seemed pretty empty. Uh, So I thought, okay, maybe I can add these little cute skater characters to it. Um, I've completely forgotten like an essential part of the story. (laughs) Um, Let's go back to, you know, went on a holiday, took the photographs and then over lockdown, um, just the start of lockdown, I picked up skateboarding. I think I just saw girls skateboarding on YouTube and I was like, that's pretty cool. And then I just happened to come across my dad's skateboard in the shed I was like, I have to practice this right now. Kind of fell in love with it since day one, even though it was really clumsy and bad. But well, regardless, it's, it's got to happen. I mean, yeah, exactly. It's inevitable. It would be terrifying if he got on and was a pro? <laughs> instantly a pro. That would be pretty cool, <laughs> but but it's unachievable. Um, mm. That's exactly it. You have to be really terrible at first, but just kind of have to accept that, you know, first you're terrible, then you become OK and then you get good and then you get better. But, you know, it's, it's all a journey. It's not really about getting perfect. Anyway, so I started skateboarding and that kind of consumed me at the time. I was coming up to um, finishing my last year of college and the skateboarding was like a way to deal with the stress and even just dealing with the, you know, lockdown was especially scary at the start. You know, no one really knew how to handle it. And I had way more free time. So skateboarding loads. Then I graduated. And like I said, I was thinking of ways to build my portfolio and I was kind of skateboard crazy at that point and I just wanted to draw skateboards all the Mm. time like only make art about skateboarding and I remembered that ramp that I saw in Amsterdam and decided to illustrate it finish the illustration but the the vert ramp seemed very empty and quiet so I thought I'd add these cute girl skaters specifically because you know skateboarding is like traditionally such a, a male dominated sport and I think since the 80s, you know, more and more women have joined the sport and there's been way more representation and, you know, thus encouraging more women um, and girls to join. Over lockdown, there was an even bigger boom of women joining skateboarding, I think. You know, for instance, the HBO series Betty came out, so that was like a huge bit of exposure. And then more recently, there, were, you know, skateboarding was in the Olympics, so, and there was, you know, the women's categories there, so that encouraged more women. Um, so back to making this illustration, it, I, I wanted it to deliberately be women in the illustration. Just, you know, just a little bit of extra representation. Um, like I said, I joined skateboarding because I saw other girls skateboarding on YouTube and I thought I could do that. So I was like, OK, I'll make a little cute illustration with that. Finished the illustration and I was quite happy with it. Um, so I thought, oh, maybe, you know, I'm out of college, unemployed, maybe I can try sell some prints you know my friends have been doing it for ages it's something I've always wanted to try that was a fun learning curve in terms of like you know printing them then setting up a shop and stuff and delivering them so that went fine then a few months later I joined Studio Mala and I think a month into the job Sean messaged me to say oh hey I ordered one of your prints you know don't worry about getting it to me like super fast I I get it if you can't get to a post office Mm. etc and I was saying, oh, thank you so much. I I had no idea that you even sold the print in the first place. And he said, oh, yeah, I sold in your portfolio when we were hiring you. Mm -hmm. And uh, he says, I'd love to see it animated. 
And I said, oh, yeah, that would be really cool. And he goes, oh, you should make it a mile a mini. I was like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah, let's do it. Let's make it a mile a mini. Sean's very good for that. Oh, we should do this. Let's just do it. And this, <laughs> I, I'm very much the, the type to think, <laughs> to not think that. Yeah. And then even at the idea go, ah, oh, but, you know. Maybe don't. Yeah, that would be nice, but, you know. Okay. But Sean is a very <laughs> inspiring course mm. of just, let's, no, let's do it. Absolutely. So... I'm glad that you've experienced that same. <laughs> He's so encouraging and like so, I think, invested in his peers and just so interested in kind of pushing them to be better versions of themselves. I'm not I'm not trying to, to glorify Sean or anything. He does it oh, in no a very worry. humble All and nice Sean way. All Sean compliments are the first things to be caught. <laughs> <laughs> I've got hours of this garbage sitting on my hard drive i don't know what to do with it. just sean praise worthless um and yeah so um yeah sean kind of was the one who pushed me to make the mala mini and he was a great help while making it as well so was cora i know she was a previous guest on this podcast she animated and did some cleanup on it too and really sean and her kind of brought the characters to life a lot so very grateful to them you actually answered my second question when did your interest in skateboarding begin because the passion you have for it my assumption was that it had been a lifelong thing but it's oh, quite no. quite recent but you've really thrown yourself into it very recent and i'm not that good at it either but i kind of want to make a point of that because i really believe that you don't have to be good at something in order to identify with it like if you call yourself an artist i don't think you need to be an incredible artist, so long as you're kind of actively or even passively interested and engaging in it, then sure, you know, you can call yourself that. And I think with skateboarding or even just hob- starting new hobbies in general, I think people can feel hesitant to start because they're worried about like appearing like a poser or, oh, I, I don't want to start this new thing because I'm going to be terrible at it at first and then no one's going to like me or, mm. you know, value what I'm doing. A lot of people are put off drawing for the same reason because the internet will make you feel like what you're supposed to do is share mm. everything you do. Mm. Like I I tried to draw my house and, you know, or well, nobody owns a house anymore. But, uh, <laughs> I tried to draw my compute, my laptop <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the pressure to show your progress and maybe you don't feel like you want to do that and that Mm. makes you hesitant to try or makes you feel like you should be getting better faster Mm. because like well people aren't gonna like seeing this but uh, yeah like you say you shouldn't let those kinds of worries put you off it's it's just a part of it it is yeah and I, i think what you're saying when when everyone's kind of advertising their skills or, you know, just kind of putting out their hobbies online, you kind of see this version of them where, you know, maybe they've been drawing for 10 years or, you know, maybe they've been skateboarding for ages, but they're already so good. And then you have this presumption of when I start, I'll be like them. Mm. And when you're not, that can be a bit, a bit of a hurdle to cross. And for some people, yeah, like you said, it can put them off from even progressing anymore. But in reality, everyone is kind of stumbling and falling. Mm. What makes you want to start is you've probably seen something that mm. makes you say, I want to do that. Yeah. And then what you're trying, it's not like that. So you feel discouraged. And it's a shame because obviously the person who did the cool thing, they fell or drew stick men in tea poses for a couple <laughs> of <laughs> months before <laughs> becoming good as well. So, yeah. I'm saying to anyone listening who's feeling that, just go for it. Just just be bad. Just be bad. <laughs> just be bad at the thing you're trying. It's fine. Everyone's been there. And if you never get good, that's even fine. That's, fine. <laughs> that's, that's pretty cool that you're even still going. Mm. You know, it's actually really cool if you're still doing it, if you're bad. Because, you, you know, that's giving me the impression that you don't care and you're just doing it for the fun of it. Previously on the podcast, we talked about how common it is for people who are into animation to also be into music, like musicians. Mm. 
you brought up skateboarding mm. as in a similar way that uh, there's a surprising amount of crossover. Yeah, this was another really cool thing. So I guess for context, when I was in college studying animation, it felt as though animation was kind of all I did. You know, I'd be spending hours and hours at the studio working away. And if I had free time, I'd either spend that like with friends or relaxing or I kind of felt this impulse to keep creating art because I thought if I keep making art, I'll I'll get better. And that's true to some extent, but then you can kind of push that a bit too far and burn out and then not progress at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but anyway, like I said, you know, four years of animation college kind of, um, you know, even though I was friends with people studying other disciplines like film or design for screen and stage, things like that. And I was encountering so many different types of artists in different media from different backgrounds, but there's still a bit of an echo chamber in that environment of just kind of a liberal art school Mm -hmm. vibe. Um, Then when I started skateboarding, I kind of ended up discovering a whole new community that I was very uh, unaware of before that. I think before I only had a stereotypical idea of a, a skater. And then I was even more surprised where until then skateboarding and animation seemed like very, very different things. When I started doing both, I started to see loads of overlap. Like firstly, in the skaters I'd meet, I'd end up meeting a lot of artists and creatives, like whether they're into videography or photography or illustration. There's a huge overlap, even, you know, just in terms of like skate parts, which are like video edits of um, skateboarding or making posters to promote events. Another thing that really struck me was I was listening to a skateboarding podcast. I think it's called Quell. And they were interviewing Beatrice Demont, I think, uh, who's an amazing skater. And they asked her, what inspires you? And I was expecting to hear like, oh, I'm really inspired by this skater's style or this person's playfulness. And she said, well, actually kind of inspired by everything that isn't skateboarding, because in her opinion, it felt as though the skateboarding world was kind of eating itself up, like, you know, let's say a new spot was discovered and some skaters would go there, they'd put it online, other skaters would go, oh, we have to go there and we're doing the same tricks. And then, you know, someone sees that, they're like, oh, we have to recreate that in this spot. And there's kind of the cycle of taking inspiration from previous skaters. um, But if you keep doing that again and again, it becomes more diluted and I suppose repetitive. I haven't experienced that personally because I guess I'm not that, you know, spending all my time skateboarding. I try and be a bit more varied when she said that, like feeling like oh, it's the kind of the skate world, skateboarding world is eating itself up, I remember hearing that exact same sentiment in animation, mm. where I think a common critique is animators being inspired by previous animators or animated TV series or films, and then that becoming a cycle. Um, Definitely. Yeah, and so you know, she, you know, she, a skater was saying, "Oh yeah, you know, I draw inspiration from art or galleries or photography," and then you have me, an animator, saying, "Oh well, I'm inspired by." Um, skateboarding Mm. uh, it's just yeah just a really even though they're very different scenes um, yeah it's just funny that that rang true and and I guess I imagine that that is also a pretty common situation in other industries Mm. like maybe I don't know in the dentist industry (laughs) dentists are so tired about talking about teeth they're like oh this is so boring Mm. I want to talk about Breaking Bad or something you know (laughs) (laughs) yeah fuck fuck House, fuck, fuck. House, fuck, fuck. House. Ba-doop, boop, boop, scoop, boop, 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 boop. Have you any advice for people who might want to start a hobby? Um, as an adult. As an adult? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it can be difficult, I guess, in terms of like finding the time for it or even the mental space for it. Like, it's so easy to just kind of become so invested in your nine to five or your occupation that you don't think you have the opportunity to. But despite that, no, I'd, I'd really, really recommend it, especially because I think picking up a hobby as an adult is so vastly different from starting one as a child, where I feel like, for instance, I've been drawing most of my life, probably since I was four. And I've developed a lot as an artist since then, but I've also, I think, picked up a lot of insecurities just through growing up because, you know, I've gone through you know, being nine or going through my teenage angst or uh, even college angst. 
and you encounter so many different people and influences there, like, you know, teachers, parents, family members, even just friends, peers, and they're all going to affect you growing up and affect your perception of yourself and your work, good and bad. So I guess, I think like a lot of artists, I I, was, I felt very insecure about my work. Um, I think I used to be very um, harsh on myself because I knew that, you know, I'd been drawing for so long, but I'm still not good enough or I'd be comparing myself, my, I'd be comparing my work to others and feeling bad about myself. Um, I think because I had this expectation on myself that I've been doing it for so long, I should be good at this, at mm. this point, but I'm not. And then when I started skateboarding as an adult, I was a beginner. There, there was no, you know, going around that, like inevitably, you know, stone cold beginner, you know, really clumsy and awkward at first. And I found that so freeing because I didn't have the same expectations on myself as I did for drawing, which I'd been doing for years and years and years. And once I treated myself as a beginner, it was so much easier to to progress and learn. I wasn't in that rut of, I'm not good enough or, yeah. I, 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 you know, I should be better than this. I was just like, I'm, I'm pretty bad at this, but I can feel myself getting just a little bit better every day I, I go out and skate. And I had this huge revelation of, wait a minute, why don't I treat my work and my art the same way? And I've started doing that since, and I've, I've like creating art has been such a, a friendly and pleasant, you know, experience since then. It's so much easier just to create art and not care if it's it's good or not. And I think that's such a like, hugely important lesson, but I, you know, I picked it up from, through skateboarding, you know, the furthest, the furthest thing from mm. um, animation. And I got, I'm not here saying everyone should start skateboarding, <laughs> you know, but if you can pick up a new hobby, you're inevitably going to experience some very different feelings from what you're used to in creating art. And yeah, I think that can overall just benefit you as a person. I think also if you're an artist and maybe it's the main thing you do, it's so easy to base your self-worth and base your identity around that mm. um, and base your self-worth off of your productivity or your position. And I think that can be really healthy in terms of goal setting. But at the same time, if you kind of take that too seriously, you're not really allowing yourself the opportunity to just be a person and, mm. you know, experience fun things and, you know, just just kind of, you know, be in the moment and exist and stuff. So when you, you know, start a new hobby, it, it does allow you the opportunity to just kind of remember, oh, I am a person mm. outside of my nine to five, outside of my occupation, outside of my position, I am allowed to enjoy these things. And my self-worth is kind of based on all of me, not just yeah. the, the main thing I'm meant to do. And you mentioned um, time management and how that can be tough with starting a new hobby. How do you approach making that work for you? Oh, good question. I just try my best, I think. You know, I <laughs> a lot of trial and error. Yeah, I remember when I was in college, I kind of put this expectation on myself that I should always be working on my projects. And if I'm not working on it, I'm like you said, like I'm slacking, which isn't true, but it's how I felt at the time. And then my output was just kind of average because I just kept pushing myself even though I was tired or didn't have the motivation. And then I started at Studio Mala and there was just the completely this like really, it felt like such a, a, a healthy environment in comparison. I think especially being able to say, okay, I'm doing something creative nine to five. And then afterwards, I'm not obligated to keep creating. Mm. I can do whatever I want in the evenings. Um, it's or time to head to the Animal Crossing Island. Sure, of course. Of yeah, why not? Um, <laughs> And uh, I think I was very strict in myself to kind of work nine to five and then afterwards don't create any art. In which case, I, I, you know, I would finish work and then I would go skateboarding or mm. see friends and stuff. But you know, it's not as black and white as that. When I started working on my Mala Mini, um, which was kind of after hours, that was a whole learning curve of how do I do my job and then make a make a short film mm. and skateboard <laughs> um and yeah it took me months to figure out 
a good uh, work-life balance. I think I managed kind of ended up as kind of like, okay, some evenings I'll work on the Malamini, other evenings are for skateboarding, or if there's a good weather day, that skateboarding and the Malamini thing can wait. But even then, I think I scheduled my time pretty badly. And I think in the last month coming up to the Malamini release, I kind of just focused on the Malamini for, uh, I kind of took a break from skateboarding. But I only did that because I promised myself that once it was released, I wouldn't, I would, as much time I spent just making art, I would spend that much time not making any art. Mm. So I think it was released sometime mid-October. Um, so I was like, okay, I promise until mid-November, I wouldn't make any art at all. Mm. I'll just get back to skateboarding. And it's been great. And now, and, you know, since kind of taking that month off, I feel more recalibrated and kind of mm. even and relaxed. So, and I've kind of taken a, a break from being creative in that sense where now, you know, in a few weeks, I'm like, okay, I could, I could make some art again in my spare time if I wanted. But yeah, I guess just being aware of where you're spending your energy. And if you're aware that you're spending too much time working or you're spending too much time making art or maybe you're completely avoiding art, but you don't want to just kind of taking a moment to just kind of assess your situation and be like, well, actually, I could maybe reschedule my day or my week or my month to just kind of or, you know, just choose like, okay, on Wednesday, I will go to that pottery class I've been meaning to go to Mm. for months (laughs) or on Thursday I'm going to play Animal Crossing whatever you know just kind of yeah the nine to five cut off thing is very difficult in creative Mm, worlds because it's so easy to feel like but if I did just do another hour there'd be another hour done and you know I can go I can go another hour and if you were in a crappy office job and it hit five o'clock, you know you would be throwing <laughs> the phone out the window. You're out of there. Yeah. Absolute fuck this. <laughs> I'm done. Um, you know that cutting that off at that time is the only way you're able to face it again mm. the next day. And you just have to remind yourself that like, even if it's not something you hate doing, you need that downtime to be able to do it again the next day like yeah you're gonna feel at the time that i'm getting more done if i just go this extra hour or two mm. or maybe even three but don't do it by the end say if you do that on monday before the week is through you're already going to be seeing you're getting less done in the long run because you're just wearing yourself out like the nine to five cutoff is a long run advantage for your own well-being and for the work so i mean i'm giving myself this advice as i'm saying it because i'm (laughs) i'm off with it but i know that it is good to have that strict be strict with yourself and take care (laughs) it's so it's so beneficial entirely and i felt like towards the end of working with malamini where all my time was working on it i was feeling more burnt out and more tired and less motivated but on the other side, when I work my nine to five and then I go skateboard for a few hours, you're right. I do feel way more refreshed the following day or the following week. Um, and just a lot more content. With your work, what is the hardest part and what is the most fun? Uh, to do a mala or? I mean, just with your creative work in general. Oh, so what was the hardest part and what was most fun? Mm-hmm. Oof. Um, I'd say the hardest part is probably starting. Like whether that's creating art or working on a short film or skateboarding, I find it very tough to motivate myself to start. Like, oh, it's too cold outside or mm-hmm. I'm tired <laughs> or um, or I have these, you know, plans of I want to do this, I want to do that. And then the time comes around and I'm like, oh, I don't want to start this. Um, but then I kind of remind myself that, you know, even if I do it for five minutes, once I kind of start those five minutes, it's so much easier just to stick with it and find a flow and stuff. And then the most fun part, I think is, I think I was saying this before about, you know, when I see myself as a beginner and just being way kinder to myself is seeing the teeny bits of progress you make every time you do it. 
a very clear example with skateboarding is, you know, on day one, I will I would just be trying to push on the board and stay balanced. And even, you know, after half an hour of doing that, I'd, I'd notice, oh, hey, I'm balancing a bit better. This is so cool. And then the next day I'd go back and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm I'm doing even better than the previous day. I get really excited about progress, um, even if it's really minuscule like that. Mm. And then when I started applying that to my drawing, you know, at first I'm like, oh, I'm so rusty. This 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 doesn't look as good as it is in my head. Um, but then I keep going. And then after an hour, it's like, OK, I'm feeling more comfortable. I feel warmed up. This is beginning to look a bit better. And then, you know, if I just kind of do that regularly enough, you know, you do see the progress you're making. And it doesn't have to be extravagant or incredible mm. um, and you're not going to be incredible in a week or a month or even a year you know I think when you realize it's okay to progress really really slowly and you allow yourself just to progress really slowly then you can really begin to enjoy it it's great that you're able to acknowledge like, to see and acknowledge that progress because sometimes like people will be progressing but because they want to be better Mm. already they're not letting themselves step back and appreciate like i'm not getting better until i'm great it's like but you are you are yeah and uh you know being able to see that will help you get better sooner because you're not uh stressing out you're not (laughs) you know trying to push your way through this this wall without taking into account that You've already, you've gotten to the wall. Mm. Yeah. And things you're doing now are things that a few months ago, you know, something you re- you really wanted to be able to do. And now you can do it and it's fine. But mm. it is just going to be a very slow and long journey. I think uh, whenever I get in a rut about my skateboarding, I like to call it snail boarding <laughs> and just see my progress as, as that of a snail. Super slow, but getting places and <laughs> mm. <laughs> um, I should point out this is the first Studio Mala podcast where I'm sat in the same room as the guest on proper microphones this time <laughs> which is nice this isn't a zoom call and uh, that's that's great I'm just really glad to see a person who's not <laughs> moving in 15 frames per second whatever (laughs) zoom quality is but uh i'm hoping that over the next year there'll be more of this definitely you deserve it (laughs) i hope so the fact that you are here in person also means you get to be the very first guest to really draw from the oblique strategies deck which uh, i'll remind listeners is a set of cards devised by Brian Eno and is it Peter? I always forget the other fellow. I feel bad about that. <laughs> Peter Schmidt. Yeah. Artist Peter Schmidt and Brian Eno. Only Brian Eno is making money off this now. Poor Peter Schmidt is no longer with us and Brian Eno is charging a hefty amount for these cards. I was disgusted when I saw it. Oh. Uh, I really should have charged Mala for <laughs> the cards. Anyway, <laughs> I'll uh, decide later if I'm going to leave that in the other. <laughs> so if you're stuck in a rut creatively, uh, you draw one of these cards and it just gets your mind on some other track. Hopefully this is the idea. So cool, cool. let's see what we've got. Okay. So imagine you're creatively bankrupt (laughs) and uh, you don't want to be anymore so let's see what we've got this is really heavy yeah can i can i empty the cards out oh yeah or or am i meant to take the top one take from the top there what do we got water just water just just water okay so (laughs) just that are your neurons just Firing. I'm so inspired by this card. Just just put water in whatever it is you're making. Water. Interesting. Okay, let me think about this. Because the first thing that's coming to my mind is stay hydrated. Yeah. No, it's that's important. You know, if you if you're feeling really down about your art or what you're working on, you could just be really dehydrated or hungry. Mm. <laughs> Maybe assess the situation and be like, when was the last time I 
drank something other than coffee or tea mm. uh you know drink your water take a break eat food knowing that <laughs> these are primarily used by musicians i do wonder what a guitarist would do with i've just drawn the water card just play it more waterly <laughs> i suppose <laughs> i know because yeah that's what i was saying uh first thing that came to mind is you know take care of the essentials before you try and pursue the the goal you're trying to achieve or the hobby you're engaging in but then i'm like oh maybe i could be more more fluid mm. more artsy but that doesn't feel authentic so <laughs> I, that my tip is just stay hydrated <laughs> <laughs> i mean it's the more it's the more helpful of the two definitely i mean you'll save lives with the second one <laughs> <laughs> it does make me want to mention the fact that if there is i don't i see i don't know how this is going to sound once it goes out but you might hear a fish tank in the background so oh. that's water so <laughs> if anyone can hear a hum and was wondering what it is it is a beautiful goldfish uh, in a tank it's a huge goldfish it's it's one of the largest i've seen it's record breaking <laughs> it's our 5 year old goldfish pud who's recently moved into a new mansion of a tank because he's such a, a beast. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's coincidental, the water. Maybe, I think you should have, I think, I think Pud the goldfish actually drew this card. <laughs> Pud stays hydrated. That's, <laughs> that's his key to his beauty and strength. So he's glowing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're just looking at the fish and admiring it if you were oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> if, so random. If, you, if you want to draw another one oh no i, I feel like that's maybe cheating i mean i'm never going to get through the whole thing the studio man of podcast is not going to run for 500 episodes or whatever it is so I c- if you want another one we can pick a second one and then you choose which one you prefer okay this one says make something implied more definite and then in brackets, reinforce, duplicate. So basically make your work more on the nose. Stop being subtle. And uh, <laughs> just have, like, if you were making a short, have your characters announce what the meaning of the, <laughs> the piece is. Um, again, I'm wondering about musicians. Sure, <laughs> yeah. Seeing that. Stop doing a nice background trumpet just blow it stop you know? being so wishy-washy just <laughs> really shout go it. for it yeah <laughs> this this card feels too intelligent for me <laughs> <laughs> and on that note <laughs> cassandra thank you very much for joining me on the studio mala podcast thank you so much for having me it's it's been a treat it has it's been great seeing a person in person you're welcome (laughs) let's hope for more of that in 2022 yeah let's all have a good year and let's stay hydrated Mm -hmm. and let's be good to ourselves and with our time management and let's do it 2022 it's going to be a good one yeah i think we've had enough crap years in a row Mm. let's have a good one let's do it (laughs) 